hello welcome again to this channel today i want to take you through time series analysis using the ARDM model and in this video i will only take you through the theoretical background of the ARDL model for the analysis of time series data and before I proceed, I would like to explain what an ARDM model is. And an ARDM model is an OLS-based model that can be applied for time series data that is non-stationary. And also, the time series data has a mixed order of integration. So you find that there is a combination of, of order 0 and order 1. And in an ARDM model, you include the lags of both the dependent variable and the dependent variables as regressors. That means that the dependent variable can be predicted by first its own lag and also the lags of the independent variables. And in an ARDM model, the dependent and the independent variables, they are related both at, both at the present and also in the in their lagged values. The procedure that you use to run or to analyze the time series data using the ARDM model is that you first you check the stationarity, that is you run the unit root test, then you select the optimal lag. And depending on the results that you get for the stationarity test, you run the Johansen cointegration test or the Bouts test. For the Johansen cointegration test, it is conducted if all variables are stationary at level or all of the variables are integrated of order 1. That is, either there is integration of order 0 and or there is integration of order 1. But for a bounds test, it is conducted if some of the variables are stationary at level while others are stationary at first difference. That means that there is a combination of order 0 and order 1. So you find that for Johansen co-integration test, you cannot use it if some of the variables are integrated of order 0 and others are integrated of order 1. So that is the difference. So depending on the results that you get for stationarity, that will determine if you run the Johansen co-integration test or the Bouts test. For stationarity test, there are a number of methods that can be used to test for unit root and the one that is normally used or that is common is the argumented Dikifule or Dikifula test and for the stationarity test the null, the, or the null hypothesis is that the data is non-stationary or there is a presence of a unit root or the alternative hypothesis is that the data is stationary. And for the ADF test, the rule of thumb is that if the T statistic is greater than the 5% critical value, then reject the null hypothesis. Then that would mean that the data is stationary. And if the T statistic is less than the 5% critical value, then do not reject the null hypothesis, then that would mean that the data is non-stationary. In that case, generate the first difference variable and run the unit root test once more. So after you've run the stationarity test, the next step is the selection of the optimal lag. And the selection of optimal lags can, or there are 
different criteria that are used to, to select the optimal lag, such as the AIC, SIC, PIC, and others. And the criterion that you select is the one that has the lowest value. And when selecting the optimal lag, the lag order is indicated by, by an asterisk. And the lag length with the most number of asterisks is the one that is selected. So that is the sec second step for the time series analysis. And we have said that after running the stationarity test, you determine or you decide which test you learn next. It could be Johansen cointegration test or the Bouts test. And we have said that for Johansen cointegration test, you use it when the variables that you are using in your analysis they have or they are stationary or all of them are stationary at level or all of them are stationary at first difference so you cannot use the Johansen cointegration test for a combination of of data or series that are integrated of order 0 and order 1 and for cointegration when you talk about cointegration we mean that that although two series move independently, the average distance between them remains relatively constant over time. And two series are cointegrated if they are both individually non-stationary. If there is no cointegration, then the difference between the series changes with time. And that which is cointegrated, the difference between them does not change or it is constant over time. So the null hypothesis for Johansen cointegration test is that there is cointegration and the alternative hypothesis is there is no cointegration. And the rule of that or the decision criteria that you use is that if the trace statistic value is greater than the 5% critical value then reject the null hypothesis and that means that there is no cointegration. After that, we we'll say that after running the stationality test, you, you will decide if you are going to do the Johansen cointegration test or the Bouts test. And the Bouts test is conducted if some variables are stationary at level and others are stationary at first difference. That is, some variables are integrated of order 1 and others are integrated of order 0. And before you run the Bouts test, first you have to check the optimal lag for each variable. And for the Bouts test, it is used to test if there is a long-run relationship between the variables. And the null hypothesis in this case is there is no cointegration and the alternative hypothesis is there is cointegration. The decision criteria that you use for Bouts test is that if the F statistic value is greater than the upper bound critical value, then there is cointegration. But if the F statistic is lower than the critical value for the lower bound, there is no cointegration. And if there is no cointegration, then we conclude that there is only a short run relationship. So the two variables or the variables that you are testing only have a short run relationship if there is no cointegration. And if there, the, the, there is no cointegration, then perform the ARDL model, estimate the short run relationship, and interpret the results for the short run relationship. But if you get that 
there is cointegration. That is, the F statistic value is greater than the upper bound critical value. Then you are going to run the error correction model, which is used now to test the wrong learn relationship. That is, if there is cointegration. If there is cointegration, that means that there is a long run relationship. So you run the error correction model and interpret the long run result. So that is the procedure that you use when you are running the ARDL model. You say that first check the stationarity test, then select the optimal lag. Depending on the results that you get for the stationarity test, you run the Johansen cointegration test or the Bowles test. That is it for today and in the next consecutive videos, I will take you through the test for each of, or I'm going to explain to you how you run this test in SPSS from, or not in, not in SPSS but starter, from stationarity test to optimal lag selection to Johansen cointegration test, bounces and the error correction mo model. So please watch out for the next videos by subscribing to this channel and also please do not forget to like this video. Thank you for today.